Hey guys, I'm Drago and happy spooky man! <laughs> hey, it, it's November. You're a bit late. Now, oh, as some of you may know, I enjoy partaking in spriting for the fan game Pokemon Infinite Fusion. I have already done a few videos of it on the channel before, and they did an event called Spritetober. It's basically where each day you're given a new prompt, a new theme to go with, and you make a fusion sprite based on that theme for that day. You're kind of supposed to do it in October, but I'm lazy and I like to procrastinate, so I never got around to it. <laughs> I actually started doing it on November 1st because that makes sense. But hey, either way, I thought this might make a fun video to do for all of you. Sitting down and just doing all the sprites in one video. So hopefully you enjoy these spooky themes, even if it is November. <laughs> and let's get on with the video. Starting off with day one, we have the prompt of Harvest. Now, considering Pumpkaboo was recently added to the game, I just had to go for this one. Because you know, Harvest, Pumpkins and all that. And the way I choose the Pokemon fusions that I go with, I tend to choose one Pokemon that can fit the theme. And then I will scroll through the Fusion Dex website and I will just look at all the Pokemon that can fuse with that Pokemon and just sort of see what I can come up with, what ideas I can come up with. And in doing this, I saw Sudowoodoo. And I immediately had the idea of its uh, balls on its hand. I don't know what they are, but you know, there's little balls that it has hand the leaf balls having those be the little pumpkins of pumpkaboo and so i grabbed a custom base of sudorudu by robo soup and i'll make sure to always credit the custom bases of anyone that i use these custom bases are being put in asset gallery in the discord server they are free to use with credit and so the credit for this one goes to robo soup if i don't give any credit it's because it's an official sprite from pokemon themselves as usual the general rule is head of one pokemon and body of the other and the head pokemon determines the color palette so i made the top of sudorudu the fluffiness of pumpkaboo i turned those little prongs that come out of it into the curly hair of Pumpkaboo and then I made the leaf balls larger because it'd be easier to make them look like the actual pumpkins that way. I have to admit it ended up kind of funny because it's just kind of flesh toned and it's <laughs> it's a little bit sus honestly. <laughs> it's just kind of funny when you look at it afterwards. I didn't even think about that when I made it but afterwards looking at it now it just kind of looks like a uh, nude man running around and I just find that quite funny. <laughs> Moving on to day two and our prompt is jaw and of course I had to go for Marwile on this one. Once again looking through the fusion decks I was really surprised to see that Entei and Suicune had spikes for Marwile but Raikou didn't and looking at Raikou I had an idea for it. So I decided to fill in that gap and make Marwile slash Raikou and my idea was that that cloud thing that comes out the back of Raikou's head and curls around I'd make those jaws a mile while. So they come out of the back of the head and they curl around into these big jaws. The rest of Raikou was going to remain relatively intact. The cross on its face I made a little bit floppier to show that other, I guess, horn of mile while. They are technically horns, I think. And on the legs, I added that sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, but mile while has this sort of fan out of fur or clothing or whatever it is. And then it'll go into the feet. So I added that as well. Other than that, this guy was relatively straightforward. In this case, Raikou was a custom base, and this custom base was made by Cat and KG and Scarecrow924.
stock was mechanical. There was quite a few Pokemon that I could have gone for here. In the end, I ended up with Magnazone. It's not really one that I've made a sprite of before, so I thought it'd be fun to try. And I thought a good way to fit the plants would be to take something that's usually organic and turn that mechanical. And I ended up deciding on Pineco because I sort of had an idea for it, but in the end, I found it hard to execute. The idea was the sort of UFO shape of Magnazone would be in the middle with the one eye, and then the sort of plates of metal would come up and make the curves of Pineco, both above and below. And I'd make them more geometric, I'd make them harsher, I would add some screws to them and such. But I just couldn't really get it to work how I wanted. And by the end of it, it turned out to be my least favourite sprite I've done almost overall, let alone for this challenge. But sometimes that's just how it goes. I just couldn't get this concept to work how I wanted and I couldn't think of anything else to do either. I tried scrolling back through fusion decks, but nothing was really giving me any ideas. I don't really sprite the robotic Pokemon often. They're not always my favourites. I usually prefer the more animalistic Pokemon. But hey, this was a learning curve in the end. And I at least got it acceptable enough to be submitted to the game. <laughs> Day 4 we had Decay as the theme. Again, quite a few mons you could use here. In the end, I ended up choosing Garbodor. Is that its name? Garbodor? Is that how you say it? I always forget what its name is, okay? Because I like always forget this Pokemon even exists. <laughs> But I ended up with Garbodor and again scrolled through fusion decks and decided to choose Pupitar. I chose Pupitar because if you think about how Larvitar evolves, you know, it goes from a larvae into a pupae into the final form. The pupae is always shed off and left behind usually. And then it is left to rot and decay. So I thought that fits the theme quite well as well. So we have this discarded pupae shell that is considered trash, I guess, to the thing that came from it. And it is decaying. So that's the general thought I had going here. In terms of mixing the to, I basically took the face shape of Pupitar and extended the bronze and made them wiggly and stuff to fit uh, Garbodor's sort of wiggliness of the green that comes down. I don't know what is with Garbodor. I don't know. Is that like supposed to be a, a trash bag, a green trash bag that's over its head? I don't know. But I did that and the bottom part of the body was made of the sort of brown garbage stuff. The little leggies of Pupitar I made into the straws. And I also actually gave Pupitar a mouth to match Garbodor, which actually made it a little bit terrifying. But hey, it's spooky month that works. Next up we have Showtime and this is one that took me a while to think of a combination because I couldn't think of anyone to do other than Meloetta and Meloetta is probably one of my least favourite Pokemon. I am not a fan of the more humanoid Pokemons as I said before I prefer the animalistic ones but I guess in the end I did mix it with an animal because I chose one of the Oricorio forms. Oricorio being all about showing off its different feather plumes and stuff so I thought it fits Showtime. This Oricorio base was by Gordo Gamer and I also used a Meloetta custom base here to reference the head from, this one being from Gaffeen. 
You can find all these users on the Pokemon Infinite Fusion Discord server, which I will link below in the description. But the usernames I am leaving out for credit are their Discord usernames. But basically the idea was that I was thinking of it if it were on a stage during the show. Meloetta is sitting while showing off her dance moves and Oracorio is perfect for dance moves. Uh, it's like the dancing bird Pokemon. <laughs> I don't know if that's its actual name, but you know what I mean. Day number six, we have Autumnal as a theme. Initially, I was going to try and make it that I didn't use any duplicate Pokemon, but I couldn't think of anyone else to use other than Pumpkaboo again here. And I wanted to go for Autumn Leaves. So I went through different grass Pokemon and ended up choosing Blossom because it has some nice big leaves to show off. Just like before, I used the fluffy head of Pumpkaboo and replaced Blossom's head with it. I was going to try to find a way to keep the flowers on, but I just couldn't find a way to make it work. So I focused most of this theme onto the leaves. I made sure to texture them a lot more like actual leaves rather than just the sort of flat colour that Blossom usually has. And speaking of Blossom, this custom base is by Quotelass. So even the official Blossom sprite just has kind of flat leaves, you know. And I wanted to add that proper texture to make them look more dried up and autumnal. In the end, before submitting, I had to remove a little bit of that texture in to keep it more to the Pokemon style. This is why if you see between the end of the video and the reveal of the sprite, if there's differences that you can see, it's because I have submitted it to the Discord for feedback Back, and you have to sort of get feedback and edit your sprite to uh, sort of match the Pokemon style a bit better before submitting it to the actual game. So you see me sprite it but I don't really record the edits because they can happen over a few days. But the sprite you are seeing at the end of each day are the reveals. Those are the ones that I actually have officially submitted to the game. With Corruption as the next theme, I couldn't think of anyone better to use than Darkrai. And I wanted to make sure I did Darkrai as the head because I really wanted to use that black and red colour scheme. However, scrolling through, I found out that actually almost every single head fusion of Darkrai had already been done. Other than two, and those two were Gumi or Toxapex. And Toxapex is the one that I actually came up with an idea for, so it's the one I did. This Toxapex base is by Jalaxation. And my idea was that the end of each of its tentacle things would elongate out into the wrist be smoke of dark Roy, giving it this very shadowy nightmare feeling which i felt fit the corruption theme very well it's like taking a pokemon and twisting it into a nightmare of course i had to be sort of creative with how i had some of the wisps go the tentacles on the side i had to have the wisps sort of curled in on themselves and down because obviously i'm working on a limited canvas here it's a square canvas and the idea of this sprite does take up a lot of that canvas so i didn't have room to extend them out as i would have if i were drawing this normally but i quite like the way i curled them down and crossed them over each other i think it looks quite unique the rest the idea was pretty simple though. A lot of this idea was going to also come into the shading and colouring. All these sort of thorns and spikes and toxapex, I made the red of dark rye. I gave it the sort of red jaw thing as well. And the shading was quite important here. I really, really wanted to emphasise the wispiness of the sort of smoky areas. So I quite heavily referenced how dark rye is shaded on the official sprite, where it has these sort of more circular areas of highlights surrounded by shadow, where the more bulbous parts of the smoke is the highlights, if that makes sense. I don't know how to verbalise it, but it makes sense in my head. <laughs> but this is one of my favourite sprites I did for this challenge. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Thank <laughs> you. 
On to theme number eight and actually also day two of me doing all these sprites we have protection as the next theme i immediately thought of agron with its sort of armor like look and as usual i had to scroll through and i saw somehow agron and onyx hadn't been done which really surprised me because i thought these are two that go together really well and i was expecting that to have already got a sprite but it didn't and i'm quite happy i was able to pick it up this onyx custom base was made ironically by onyx 98 and i could like perfectly fit agron's head onto this the idea I had was that it was pretty much Onyx's body, but it had Agron's metal part going down the body as the armour, which fits the protection theme. In the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty simple sprite, but honestly, these two mesh together really well. And even though the idea was simple, I did have a little bit of trouble doing the spiky plates of armour going down each rock. It was hard to get the angles right on that sometimes. Pixel art can be a bit difficult in terms of having enough space to add the details you need. But I think I got there in the end, and I hope the idea shows through well enough. Day 9 I went a lot more complex on this. The theme for this day is myth and I could have gone for the route of using a mythical Pokemon but I decided to go for more of the literal definition of myth. Now my initial idea was actually to do a Lycan Rock Midnight fusion with one of the matchup line Pokemon to sort of do a werewolf but I couldn't really find a way that I wanted to do it properly and I googled uh, different myths, different recognisable myths and how I could correlate those into a Pokemon fusion and I ended up settling on Bigfoot because I had the idea of Machoke and Slackin, a big ape man. Here I didn't use any base, I referenced the different sprites, but I did take the infamous Bigfoot photo and I just sort of roughly outlined it so I could get an idea of what this might look like in pixel form and get the idea of the pose down and all that. Honestly, this is a really hard one for me to sprite. I mean, if you know me, you know I can't draw humans as it is. So spriting a human or Pokemon is just, oh, it's pain for me. <laughs> but I think I got the iconic pose through quite well. I think it does communicate it's supposed to be Bigfoot. I hope it does at least. <laughs> but hey, I'm proud of myself for getting more creative on this one and fully freehand on it. I do sometimes completely freehand the sprites. It can be fun to do. Depends what sort of mood I'm in. Mean, sometimes I'd rather do something a bit quicker while I use a base or use one of the official sprites. But for this one, doing it freehand was quite fun. I quite enjoyed it.
Next up, we have phobia. I basically just went for the first phobia that came to mind for me, which was arachnophobia. So the choice for those was between Galvantula and Ariados. I lent more towards Ariados because it's a lot more spider-like than Galvantula. Galvantula is just a big fluffy dude. He's very cute. And in the end, I chose Lantern because as soon as I saw it, I thought about another phobia that I could use. The Lassophobia and fear of like the deep sea and what's in there and all the sea creatures like Subnautica. So I thought I could merge Arachnophobia and fear of bugs with Lassophobia and fear of the deep sea into one fusion. And so I turned Lantern into a horrific anglerfish spider monster because why not? <laughs> I gave it a big wide open mouth with loads of thin sharp teeth. I even added in the fans of Ariados and the horn of Ariados. I gave it a dead eye with no pupil. I gave it two sets of spider-like legs from Ariados. And in the end, this guy actually ended up quite spooky. It's a shame it's November and I was too late for spooky month. <laughs> day 11 and this theme is cosmic and how can i go this whole event without doing at least one sceptile fusion come on we all know sceptile is my absolute favorite pokemon i have to always fight a sceptile at some point it has to happen i love sceptile he's amazing anyways another really recent pokemon that got added to the game was minior and so i decided to go for the minior core form and basically turn Sceptile into this creature made of galaxy meteor core stuff. I don't know what it is, but he looks cosmic at least, so it works. <laughs> this custom base is one I made myself. I have made a lot of Sceptile custom bases. <laughs> and this was basically just doing Sceptile, but with brighter, more glowing colours and those funky swell eyes. Not really much more to say for this one, so enjoy. Number 12 is actually one I struggled to come up with a fusion for. The theme for this one is weather. I of course thought of Kyogre because Kyogre is probably one of my favourite legendaries in all of Pokemon. I love the big city whale, he's amazing. And he has the drizzle ability which causes rain whenever he comes out into battle. You know, he's all about rain and water and weather and all that so I thought he fits the theme. I just couldn't think of what to put him with. At first I thought Altaria because it's sort of this cloud bird but I couldn't really think of a way to make it work. So I had a look through and I ended up landing it on Drifblim. You know, Drifblim is this big balloon that floats through the sky it does have a cloud on its head as well and i guess uh weather balloons are a thing so i guess you can see this as a weather balloon maybe i'm reaching but i think it works in a way merging the two of them was quite difficult it was more going to be giving driftblim kyogre's colors i did try to give it sort of the fins of kyogre but it just wasn't working so in the end it did come down more to coloring to make this kyogre fusion the only shape i ended up changing on driftblim was the trails that come out of the bottom of it i made those more like the 
tail trails of Kyogre with the slit in the middle. I was initially going to keep the X mouth that Driftblim has. Then I thought I could turn that into the symbol that Kyogre has on his fins and it'll make it more of a Kyogre fusion. So I went for that instead. And at the end, I also added a little bit of rain coming out of the bottom of Driftblim. Honestly, you can see me restart this one loads of times. It took me ages to get somewhere with it that I was happy with. Probably, again, one of my least favourite ones I've done for this challenge. It's a bit boring, but it's something. Day 13 and our theme is contrast. So immediately in my head I thought I would go for something that's opposite types because that is a contrast to each other and I immediately thought fire and water or fire and grass or something but I actually did that combination for the last Bryson event Merge May. I did Typhlosion and Kyogre for the opposite types theme so I thought I'd go for something different and I ended up landing on Poison Grass and having a look through different ones I decided on Celebi and Coffin. Turning Celebi this protector of the forest into this polluting piece of rock that just poisons everything it comes across. Quite the contrast if you ask me. Basically it was Celebi but instead of limbs and a head it had holes that all the poison gas comes out of and yeah that's pretty much it. Next up is day 14 and our theme for this one is Cursed. Unlike all the other sprites I did in this video, this one actually already had a sprite made for it. Usually I like to go for fusions that don't already have sprites made because I don't like stepping on the toes of another artist. But I had the idea for this one and I just had to do it. This fusion is Gengar and Shedinja. And my idea was that this hollow shed off shell has been possessed and cursed by the shadow of Gengar. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to have Shedinja but have its eyes completely black and hollow and have the shadow of Gengar leaking out of it onto the floor. Now you don't see it in the speed paint video but I had to actually do a lot of editing on the shadow. I ended up getting the perspective of it completely wrong and when I put it in the discord and I did the battle command to see how it would look in game the shadow was just like not on the floor at all it was like pointed down and it would have realistically been clipping into the floor but in the end I managed to flatten it out and get it at the right perspective and angle so that it actually looks like it's a shadow that's flat on the floor that's leaking out and you will see that in the final sprite but other than that the rest of this is pretty simple. I used official sprites here for shedding. I I used the official sprite here for Shedinja and I free-handed Gengar Shadow myself.
to day three of Spriton for me and day 15 of the challenge, this theme is Nocturnal and I immediately thought of Noivern. Noivern is just a badass Pokemon, I had to do it at some point and with it being a bat it fits a Nocturnal theme. So as usual I scrolled through fusion decks and this is one that actually really surprised me with the popularity of Haxorus as well but Haxorus and Noivern hadn't been done and I just knew immediately that's the one I had to do. Honestly mixing the gold and red of Haxorus with Noivern it just it works so well. Like these are two badass Pokemon that mix together so nicely which is why I was so surprised it hadn't been done yet. This amazing Noivern base was made by Onyx Sylvian and I thought it was a perfect pose for this fusion. The idea was to give it Haxorus's head with those sort of blades on it and then the rest of it make it look like Noivern has the gold armor on and honestly they just went together so well. I'm absolutely flabbergasted that this hadn't been done yet seriously and I'm really pleased with how it turned out as well. Day 16 our theme is abandoned and this is one of the ones I actually had an immediate idea for. I decided on Stuffle because I thought of an abandoned plushie lost out in the woods somewhere and as soon as I thought about it being lost in the woods my mind immediately also went to Phantom. So my idea was you had this broken plushie with the head ripped off, its stuffing is all falling out but the spirit that makes up Phantom has possessed this head. It is using it as its home the same way that Phantom uses that wooden part as its home but instead of the wooden tree stamp log thing it is the head of a lost abandoned plushie that being Stuffle. This is one of the more creative ones I did in terms of the idea. I'm quite happy with it. I especially like how it had the stuffing coming out of it to really show how it was ripped apart. And I made sure to make that stuffing a bit yellowed to show the age of it and how long it's been abandoned for. Next up is Disguise and Mimikyu was the obvious option here. So it was another case of going on Mimikyu's page on fusion decks and scrolling through to see what fusions hadn't been done yet and seeing if any of them catch my eye. And Sandile did actually. I like Sandile, he's a funky little dude. I'm a massive fan of reptiles in general so any of the reptilian Pokemon I really like. I thought he would actually make a cute little costume. It's basically Mimikyu but instead of mimicking Pikachu it's mimicking Sandile. I tilted Sandile's head a bit to have the sort of floppy leaning back head of Mimikyu anyway and then the rest of it was just turning Sandile into a costume. I also made it so the ghost within Mimikyu has a stick that it's holding out and that stick is holding up the snout of Sandile because it's a very makeshift costume that snout is probably floppy the head is floppy. Without the stick it can't hold the head up so it has the stick that goes under the snout and chin of Sandile in order to hold it up and be able to move the head around itself, a bit like a puppet.
For theme 18, we have Draconic. There are a lot of dragon Pokemon I could go for. And as you can probably guess by my channel name and my mascot, I love dragons. Like, the dragon Pokemon is some of my favourites. Hydreigon, Kamoo, Dragapult. I am totally blanking on the names of other dragon Pokemon right now that I like. But you know what I mean? Usually a lot of them are pseudo legendary, so that helps me out on my team as well. <laughs> Anyways, I decided to go for Hydreigon for this one and I chose Haunter as the other part of this fusion because I had the idea that the head hands that Hydreigon has are detached and floating like Haunter's hands. It was very difficult to get the head right on this one. This wasn't a case of just copy and paste in Haunter's head. That doesn't always work for every fusion. It definitely didn't work for this one. So I basically had to modify Hydreigon's head. I gave it the pointed mouth. I gave it the really slanted eye and I gave it those, um, I guess you can call them horns that Haunter have that come out. In the end it just kind of looked a bit derpy honestly. I was hoping this would be quite the badass fusion but it doesn't look as good as I hoped. It, it's kind of derpy, it looks a bit silly but not every idea works out and you just basically take that as a learning curve. It's always worth to try things and you shouldn't really ditch something if you don't like how it turned out because sometimes that's a thing you can look back on and you can think right I know what went wrong there, I know what I did that caused it to be something I don't like and I can learn from that, I can grow from that. And with this fusion, I have learned that sometimes, even though two Pokemon seem badass, they just don't merge well together. There are definitely other spiders for Infinite Fusion that could 100% do this fusion way better than I have. But this is one of my least favorite ones I've done for this challenge. But hey, dragon's a dragon. Next up we have Legendary as the theme. I have been wanting to do a Giratina sprite for a while, I somehow haven't done Giratina before. I always sort of overlook Giratina and I don't know why because it's actually a really sick design, I really like Giratina. I guess it's because I never played Diamond and Pearl. But here, the theme being Legendary, using a Legendary Pokemon, Giratina, I had to do it. And I ended up choosing the Metal Bird Skarmory because I thought if I can turn the Metal of Skarmory into the gold metal of Giratina, this could look cool. So we had two custom bases here. We have a custom base of Origin Form Giratina, which I took the head from because I really prefer Origin Form Giratina, it's so cool. But that base is by Scrappy. And this awesome Skarmory base, this pose I just had to use, it was made by Ripple Skip. Giratina's head fit perfectly onto it. The only thing I modified was to add the head spike of Skarmory onto it as well. And then the main body of Skarmory was left pretty much the same. I just added the I just added these sort of gold ribs that Giratina has. It was the winds that I really changed up. I decided to use those shadow arm claws laws that Giratina has and make those into the so-called feathers of the winds. You can't really call them feathers on Skarmory because they're metal prawns, shards. But you know what I mean. And I think this turned out so cool, honestly. These are two that you wouldn't think would go together very well, but they really do. And I'm glad I did this fusion.
up for day 20 and day four of me splicing, I think, by this point. We have historical. And I couldn't think about anyone better for this than Cofagrigus because it's an Egyptian coffin, so that works well. Again, I had a scroll through and I eventually landed on Amora. It's just mainly because Cofagrigus and Aurorus had already been done. And I absolutely loved how that fusion looked. And I thought it might be cool to make the pre evolution of that fusion. So our Amora custom base here was made by Holgast. And Cofagrigus and Aurorus, which I am referencing, that fusion sprite was made by Onyx Sylvian. Here it was a case of giving him more of that historical Egyptian crest. And I turned these sort of big fins on the eyes into the hands that Cofagrigus has. The rest of the body is pretty simple. The gem I turned into a Yamask face. And the tail I made sort of wavy and wispy like the fusion that comes after this. Day 21 and our theme this time is Vessel. I had quite a few ideas for this one. I sort of thought about a lot of the Cocoon Pokemon. They sort of like a vessel for what's inside. But I actually ended up going for Magcargo. Magcargo is a Pokemon I haven't sprited before. And I thought its shell was like a vessel so I thought I'd go for that. And in the end I chose Frostlass to go with it. Because I had the idea that the lava is actually snow. The flame coming out of the shell is a puff of cold air. And I just thought it was a nice theme to go with. I found the arms of Frostlass a little difficult to do. I think they look a little bit amateur, honestly. I probably could have done them better. But unfortunately at this stage, I was getting to a point where I was getting so worn out doing this. And honestly, I've not been feeling great for the last few weeks. So it's like just trying to get these things done and get the videos done for all of you because I hate leaving you all waiting. I hate doing late videos. But yeah, this could have been better, but I'm still quite happy with how it turned out. <laughs> Next up, we have Colourful. Now, I did initially think of Bruxish for this. You know, that really ugly fish. But I find that fish so ugly that I just couldn't think of a fusion to do for it. So I went through it and tried to think of other Pokemon with some nice bright colours. And I ended up landing on Carvana. Because Carvana has the bright yellow, the bright blue and the bright red. And it's quite colourful. And in the end, I chose Aurorus to go with it. Because I thought those big head fins that Aurorus has would be a great way to show off the colourful theme. This Aurorus base is made by Sand Coffin. And also also this Carvana base which I've taken the head from, that was made by Mild Knight. My idea here was to have the fins on the top of Carvana's head extend out to be sort of fins that then come down into the head flaps of Aurorus. So it's like it has this sturdy top part that the Pokemon can actually move to flap the head flaps. I also gave it the tail of Carvana just to add a bit more of that Carvana theme into it. As for colouring, for the head flap fin things, I use those two words interchangeably for it because I can't think of the word for what those actually are on Aurorus. <laughs> I'm sure there's a word for it, but I can't think of it right now. 
But anyway, basically I used each of the blue, red and yellow from Carvana. I did that in the gradient that Aurora's has. I even made a separate layer where I basically blurred the two colours together to get an anti-aliasing colour, a mid-tone between the two. And then after I'd done that, I went into filters and I turned down the saturation and turned up the brightness a little bit, just to make it more of that pale, lighter tone that Aurora's has on its head thin flap things. <laughs> in the end, this layer turned out nice and colourful. you really think I just do one Sceptile Fusion for this challenge? Here we are on day 23 with the theme being Texture, and Infinite Fusion's 500th Pokemon had just been added, that being Deancey. And with Deancey having both crystals and rocks as a nice texture, I thought it was a perfect match for this theme. And of course I had to mix it with my favourite Pokemon. Once again, this Sceptile base was made by me. I'm a little bit obsessed with making Sceptile bases. But my main idea here was basically turning the leaf blades and all that that Sceptile has into the crystals of Deancey. I tried to give it the more circular head crest, but I couldn't really get it to work. So I ended up giving Sceptile these layer of gems that go down its head and neck in this almost quill-like fashion. While lining it, I thought it looked absolutely awful, honestly. <laughs> I was thinking this isn't gonna work, I'm gonna have to ditch it and do something else. But as I started to color it, it actually really started to come together. Especially when I added in that rock texture for the rocky areas, it actually just really brought it all together. And then when I shaded the crystals, oh my God, it brought it together even more. In the end, I am quite happy with how this one turned out. For the theme of cryptic, I decided to go for an unknown fusion because unknown is probably one of the most cryptic Pokemon out there. Not much is known about it, it's a weird little dude. <laughs> And I ended up going for Pupitar again, actually, because I had the idea that you had the main body of Pupitar, which is literally just this cylinder thing with the one big eye of unknown. And then the sort of prongs, the sharp parts that come out of Pupitar that makes it sort of face mask thing. Those are the sort of prongs of unknown. 
and they're sort of just hollow lines, you know. Think of them as paper clips, I guess. Unknown reminds me of a paper clip. I actually made a fusion that was unknown and clefty, and it was a joke fusion. I just made a clippy from the old Microsoft programs. You remember Clippy? Hopefully some of you are old enough to remember Clippy. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna go have a meltdown in the corner about how old I am. My boy Sceptile is back for day 25 overgrowth. Of course I had to use Sceptile here, it's a grass type so it can overgrow. And I'm pretty sure Sceptile has an ability called overgrowth, so it works quite well. I decided to go for Mareep here because I thought what if I change out Mareep's wall for a bush, for leaves that have all overgrown and all messy. Fits the theme quite well. So I took the head from one of my own bases again and I had another Sceptile base here that's one I actually didn't make, surprisingly enough, it's not one I made. <laughs> this one is by SCIV, this one is by FCIV. And I I basically just wanted to take the tail from it because I like the curve that tail had and I thought it would work better for the perspective and how this fusion is going to look to have the tail curving up a little bit rather than just dead straight. So I went about giving Marie a leafy texture and I turned our lovely soft sheep into a very unkempt, really overgrown hedge. Poor guy. <laughs> to the final day of spriting. This is the day that I finished up this challenge and we started it with number 26, balance. Now there are two ways I could have gone about this. I could have gone for balance in a metaphorical sense, so like the balance of elements or something, or I could have gone balance in the more literal sense of something trying to balance, or I could have gone balance in the more literal sense of something trying to keep its balance. Guess which one I went for? <laughs> I decided on Azu Will because it has its ball base tail thing and then I thought if I use Metapod here, Metapod has a sort of point for a body. And if you think about it, it's a really small contact point. So what if I have it that this thing is trying to desperately balance on this tiny contact point it has and just trying to keep itself upright, keep its balance on this really difficult thing to balance on, which is a ball, because who could balance on a ball? Like <laughs> This poor fusion lives in a constant state of unsteadiness. He could fall over at any second. You breathe on it and it'll fall over. I have a thing, apparently, for making spikes of Pokemon that are just going to be tortured for the rest of their lives. It's like the um, Charmander and Sceptile one I made where it's poor tail and it's burning and it's like, oh no, my tail, my leafy tail is burning away. <laughs> all the all Psyduck Sceptile is in a constant state of pain with its migraines and it's just constantly screaming. I need to start making sprites that are just torturing the poor Pokemon. <laughs> For day 27 we had the theme of ooze and what better pokemon to use here than muck and after having a look through the different pokemon i ended up deciding on tentacle because then i could double the ooze you have muck which is literally made out of ooze and you have tentacle which is a squid which can make ink this tentacle base is made by and excuse me if i say this wrong xenofaclus and i decided rather than keeping the big bulbous parts of tentacle that i would turn those into the mouths of muck mainly because i had no idea what color i was going to make those anyway because muck has a very limited color palette <laughs> So the top blue part of Tentacruel was the purple part of Muck. It's just all the goop and goo and ooze and I made it all drippy. And then in terms of the tentacles, I tried to make each tentacle tip covered in ink which is also dripping down and oozing. Basically, as I said, double the ooze.
Oh my god, I'm running out of things to say at this point, but we're on to day 28, noir. I could have gone unknown again here for the colour palettes, but I decided to go more for the theme rather than the colours, and I went for Hunch Chrome. And I decided to mix it with, yes, another bird, that being Zapdos. Zapdos actually has a special place in my heart. I remember, play I remember playing Soul Silver for the first time on DS as a kid, and Zapdos was the first legendary I came across, other than the story legendary, the box legendary. And I was literally just wandering around, and I just see this pink spike. Pink. I was just, and I was literally just one. I called it pink. <laughs> I can't speak. So I called it pink. Why did I think Zapdos is pink? <laughs> And I just randomly came across this yellow spiky bird and I was like, oh cool, spiky bird thing. And I clicked on it and I caught it and it took me a very long time to figure out that that was a legendary. <laughs> anyway, so this is a pretty simple mix, but it's a mix that worked quite well. Honestly, Zapdos with Hunchko's colours actually goes kind of hard. Like with the red and dark blue, I actually really like that colour palette for Zapdos. <laughs> can that be as shiny please? Hey Game Freak, can we make that as shiny? I'd, I'd like that. Oh, and this Zapdos base, it was made by Gas Mask Blackie. For this next day, I went ambitious. So the theme for this one is adaptation. And I did immediately think of Ditto. And I had a scroll through with Ditto and I came across Tyrantrum. I thought, hey, it might be cool to have a big goopy dinosaur. So as I was looking at Tyrantrum bases to use, I came across this one made by Smashstone, which is literally Tyrantrum skeleton, which is so cool. And then I immediately had an idea. And so I went to Jerosion, which is the Pokemon that is made of green goo and it has a core inside of it. And I thought, what if I make it? So you have the skeleton of Tarantrum and the flesh of Tarantrum is made out of that green goop of Jerosion and it's adaptation because this goop has adapted to the shape of the skeleton that it's found and so I went for it and let me tell you it was difficult to do but I'm glad I did because I think it turned out really cool. The first thing I did was lay out the skeleton using Smash Stone Space and then from there it was just lining out where the flesh should be. Now it actually turned out chunkier than Tarantrum usually is but I think that works anyway because Jerosion is sort of round and chunky anyway. And if you're wondering why I decided to go for the middle leaf it's because the other two which I always forget the name of but the first Evo and the final Evo of this line they already had fusions done for Tyrantrum so I thought one I can finish the evolution line by doing Duosion and two it's just a spike that hadn't been done yet so <laughs> Shading this guy was a bit difficult. What I ended up doing was I ended up sort of building up areas of goo and trying to show that they are areas of denser goo where the skeleton can't be seen underneath. So that is the sort of fluffy neck area of Tarantrum. And some of those sticking up scales I also made like that. Mainly so I had more room for highlights and shading on the goo rather than it just being flat, you know. Because unlike Jerosion's official design where it has a lot of room to work with for shading the goo, I didn't have a lot of room to work with here for shading it. So I had to do this method of building up the density of the goo for now in order to add the shade and to make the sprite more interesting.
30, we are almost there. And this day's theme was Glow. Now, along with Sceptile, another one of my absolute favourite Pokemon is Typhlosion. And as a Typhlosion fan, I am begging that those Pokemon links were not real. <laughs> But I decided to take Typhlosion because it has fire, so fire glows. And I ended up with Ponita because it is also a Pokemon with a lot of fire. And I thought double fire means more glowing, so it fits the theme. Now this Ponita base is by Cat and KG, and this Typhlosion base is one that I made myself. And I chose this one because the way I had drawn the head on it, it's sort of hanging down, which then further fits this base for Ponita I had. And it also means there's a lot more space for me to really exaggerate the flames and lean into the theme of glow. In the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty simple sprite to do. It was just spriting up Ponyta with a Typhlosion head and then basically just making the fire really big and spiky like Typhlosion's fire. This is it, we made it, it's the last day. Day 31, trick or treat. And since Slurpuff had just been added to the game, with the mixture of Pumpkaboo and Gorgeist, I decided to make a literal trick or treat pumpkin bucket with Slurpuff in it as the sweet inside. So both of these sprites I use are official ones. I took Gorgeist and I sprited out the bottom half of its body, that being the pumpkin part, to turn that into a trick or treat pumpkin bucket. Slurpuff sits inside that bucket is one of the pieces of candy that has been collected. Now since this fusion is Gorgeist as the head, because Slurpuff as the head had already been done, I still had to add features of Gorgeist onto Slurpuff. So I gave it the swirly head hair, and I gave it the two pink arm things. I don't know what you call them. But yeah, I basically just gave it more features of Gorgeist. From there, I added a handle to the pumpkin bucket, and once I had actually coloured it all in, I decided to add other pieces of candy within the bucket alongside Slurpuff. It's so foreign to me to call it candy because I'm British and we call them sweets, but I know more people will understand it if I say candy, so... <laughs> But I added chocolate bars, I added candy corn, I added little peppermint swells. Obviously they're very abstract because they're small and there's not a lot of pixels to work with, but hopefully the message gets across with what they are. I had to do a lot of sort of dialing down with the colours in the end, I had to consolidate a lot of the colours, because there is a colour limit on Pokemon Infinite Fusion of 32 colours, 32 unique colours. And with the different shades of grey I had to make for the hand of the bucket, mixed with the new colours I had to make for the candy, I had to make sure I consolidated some. Any colours that were similar that were already there I just put together, like the the yellow of the kind of corn I consolidated with the yellow of the eyes of the pumpkin bucket, stuff like that. Oh my god, guys, my voice. My voice is like, uh. But I did it. All 31 sprites done for Spiketober in about four days. Some of these I don't like, and some of these I'm really proud of. I think my absolute favourites are day two, day seven, day 10, day 14 and 15, day 19, day 23, day 27, and day 29. Do let me know in the comments down below which of these sprites is your favourite one. And if you have any requests for fusion sprites that I could make in future videos, also comment those down below as well, because I absolutely love making these fusion spriting videos. So if you have requests, then let me know. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, maybe leave a like and subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate it. Hit the bell to turn on notifications and know when I next upload. And I will hopefully see all of you wonderful people in the next video. Bye!